Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. It is Friday, TGIF. I'm not sure when I'm going to have this video up, but now I have to make sure it's on a Friday. But I wanted to get this made for you guys as soon as possible because I got an upgrade. And as, as many of you know who follow me on Instagram um, and my posts on YouTube uh, in the uh, community, that I upgraded my MT5 Macintosh this week to a HANA ML low output moving coil cartridge. Um, this is a big upgrade from the Audio-Technica uh, uh, AT33EV. The retail price on that was about $990. The retail price on this was $1,200. But the street price on the Audio-Technica is about $550. This one is still $1,200. Um, I really didn't think for the price point difference I would hear uh, a great increase in, in, in everything. But I did. A uh, ridiculous increase in clarity, accuracy, speed, um, that's uh, channel separation, base. This is a huge upgrade. I know that Michael Frummer talked about this from Analog Planet and Stereophile. Um, he raved about this cart. That's kind of what got me interested in it. I always get my um, Absolute Sound magazine every month and I circle this as the cart next cartridge I wanted to get for about 24 months now. I circle it every, every edition. You get 10 issues a year, so I've circled it 20 times. And I finally was able to upgrade you know, just going, having the electric company yet upgraded, I really wanted to upgrade the analog section in my setup as well. I do have a synergistic orange fuse coming for this this week. So I'm hoping this elevates it. But I got to be honest with you guys, I put in Kenny Burrell, Midnight Blue, listened to it on this. And I thought it was just absolutely gorgeous until I put on the vinyl. The vinyl blew it away. This cart is magic. It, worth every penny. I'm surprised that it, they don't charge more. Um, I'm sure you guys have read all the reviews. If not, check them out. These are beaten four or $5,000 carts in many areas. Uh, I was really shocked to see that and thought it might have been a bunch of BS until I purchased it and had it installed, and it's magic. Now, speaking about the installation, guys, I'm obviously in Seattle now, not in Las Vegas. I used to go to Audio Expert. Now I go to the Audio Connection. John, he's been over there for, since, since 1980. He's a wizard. He has tools I've never seen. He spent over an hour uh, setting up this arm and the cartridge, and it sounds like magic. So um, very trustworthy and very uh, uh, meticulous uh, gentleman who cares about everything he does. Um, he's a carry audio dealer for tubes. He has rogue audio also. Um, he's a Rega dealer, has a lot of turntables, and hence his knowledge in the turntable setup. He's been doing it again since 1980. He's in the University District in Seattle. So I will put his information in the um, description. Okay, so enough talk. I'm going to obviously play you guys um, a track from uh, Chasing the Dragon. Uh, you guys probably all know about this by now. It's been out forever. It's used in like, you know, Rocky Mountain Audio Show, CES, and different shows like that. Um, my analog tools, I still have my vinyl buddy. This is a, um, a uh, what is this? Like a, shoot, I know the name. I can't think of it right now. But uh, it, it's a roller that takes off all the debris off the record. Um, silicone. Uh, it's a silicone. And it, 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 the brushes, horsehair brushes and carbon fiber brushes always just smear it around. You can take a black light on it and see after you've cleaned it that it's still there. With this, it's completely gone. I love this thing. It's on eBay. And then I use the uh, Mobile Fidelity LP9 stylus cleaner. And I have my trusty Milti uh, Zero Stat. So this is how I treat the vinyl before I play it now. This vinyl probably has some ticks and pops in it. I've had it for a while. I've played it a lot. It's been in and out of, of sleeves. I've moved. Um, you know, it's always been stored upright in the house with mobile fidelity sleeves. But this was not, believe it or not, as expensive as it was, was not a great pressing to begin with. It was a little dirty sounding, and I was kind of disappointed. But I don't think I'll get demonetized, and some of these tracks sound really good. So that's why I chose this record. So with that we will drop the needle here and i'll get into the listening position so we can hear a demo of this bad boy sorry to make you dizzy guys got to get into position here <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
What do you think, guys? Oh, hold on. The violin's kicked in. Oh, my God. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, guys, holy moly, this thing is so agile and just... Man, it's, uh, you're just pulling all the information out of those grooves, the channel separation, imaging, um, it's all there, uh, all the adjectives, right? Uh, uh, sweet sounding and, and yada yada. I just can go on and gush about it. So for those of you who have been wondering about this cart, it is ridiculously good. And I thank you guys for checking it out with me. Uh, this is not even burned in yet, guys. Obviously, we need to put some time on it. But until we do, until next time, um, I will still be getting in a review of this guy. You're probably all curious what this is. It's phenomenal. It's magic. Had to move it all around the house to get it to sound the best, but I got it dialed in. It's been in for a week now. So um, I will share with you guys later what that is in the next video. Until then, keep spinning that vinyl and keep playing your silver discs. When I get the Synergistic Research Fuse in, I'll show you guys that as well. And until next time, have a great weekend, guys. Bye-bye.